Paul, he needs a password. Mike, uh, you're gonna have to send him the password again. I don't have it. Mike's the only one who has it. Uh, we have had some technical problems. You should have emailed it to him. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to PTZ Optics Live. Happy Friday and beginning of Halloween celebrations this weekend. We are so excited to have our show today all about Wirecast gear, but also the brand new X-Keys control surface. This is an amazing new product for Wirecast users that we're actually giving away for free to One Lucky Church, which we'll tell you about in just a moment. Yeah, we're really excited about that. And when we are giving away not only this Wirecast X-Keys controller, but some other amazing streaming technology, it's going to be show on November 15th in Orlando, Florida. So make sure you enter the giveaway, which I'm assuming is coming on the next slide. That's right. And you can now take remote camera control, PTZ camera control inside Wirecast. So today we're going to give you a little demonstration of how to set that up. You must have Wirecast 9 or greater. We're on Wirecast almost 11 now there's a beta out for 11 and the wirecast gear we're going to tell you all about ptz control got some great tips for you guys so wirecast users this is gonna be a great show for you guys all righty so we just recently took our annual trip to nab new york we had a fantastic time and we hope that you guys were able to catch our irl stream of all of the amazing booths that we visited there and here are some snapshots of some photos with friends that we took there we had so much fun speaking of friend i think we have dan slider coming on shortly yes. i don't know if you want to send him a call link michael uh, which is a secondary option yes so we're having x keys on today and we're going Hopefully. to talk to Dan, to Dan Slider. And one of the things that we've been talking so much about here on our show is working with volunteers. So you have a volunteer in your church who potentially may want to help out with your video production service. Using pan tilt and zoom cameras can allow just a single person to operate multiple cameras. But we're also going to look at why having a control surface and potentially a joystick controller really makes things easier for your volunteers. So let's dig into our presentation today. We're going to be looking into, uh, I'll just keep talking. We'll be looking into how to use your Wirecast gear with PTZ Optics cameras. And Tess is in the chat. So Tess is in the chat room. So this is a live show. So you can ask questions. And Tess will be queuing up social media. Here we go. Vess Ah, thanks so much. Just received his new camera and he's super excited about it. Hey, it's our pleasure. We love it when the customers can have a good time using our video production gear. So let's jump into our presentation. We are having Dan Slider on from X Keys who's gonna help us with this in just a moment. All right, so here is the Wirecast gear right here. We actually have our keyboard here. Tess, can you just slide your Sorry, here. chat. Um, here it is right here, and we actually have an overhead view of it as well, which we're going to be looking at, and I'm going to be showing you guys how it works in just a moment. If you want to help him configure the call, I can go okay, over what I go. know so far of it. So, uh, first of all, uh, one of the things we're going to do here, oh, there you go, is uh, we want to show you the Wirecast interface here. So here is the Wirecast interface. Can we show that, that, that top-down shot? Uh, and Tess, you can use the Telestrator. I want to quickly show, because I think it's going to make more sense with this. Um, this is what we're talking about today. This is the X-Keys controller here. And Tess, why don't you just show us a couple of the buttons here using the Telestrator, and uh, we will... Oh, here, Where I'll the heck is it? The... I'll do it. Um, so here we go. All right. One second, guys. There we go. Okay, so as you guys are familiar with, this is how the Wirecast setup looks in Wirecast from a more graphical layer. So as you guys know, there's five layers. And the Telestrator's not on, Mike. The input's not on. Because I'm drawing on it. 
There, you there go. we go. Okay. So, sorry about that, guys. We have five layers in Wirecast, and they're actually color coded to the way that uh, Wirecast looks in uh, in it's the cool. software itself. So, one of the things you'll see here is we actually have 12 buttons. So, if you're We're using 12 or less, this is really perfect. 12 or less that inputs per uh, mm -hmm. per layer. Yep. So just really quickly, I'll explain how layer one I generally use for like images. And we're going to show you briefly how we set up our show actually it can be set up in Wirecast. Layer two I generally use for like videos. And then layer three is generally cameras. So we're going to show you how to use cameras. And if you've got multiple PTZ optics cameras, we actually, I like to use like one camera on layer three and then another camera on layer four. And the reason why I do that is because then you can use, for example, we're going to show you how you can use one of your cameras um, with different duplicated shots and then they have their own presets. Okay. So we're going to show all of that. And then finally, layer five is reserved for if you have NDI sources, potentially from another studio, we have a podcasting studio here. We'll show you how that's all set up as well. All right, so let's cut to our Wirecast, and I want to show you guys how cool and easy this interface is to use with Wirecast. Okay, so what you're looking at here is our Wirecast setup, and as I explained, on layer five, if I clear all my other layers, you can see I actually have our podcasting studio here. This is coming through, and this is a PTZ Optics camera, so I want to show you how easy it is to take pan tilt zoom control of this camera. So if we go to the shot layer properties, you'll see that there's a PTZ section, and if we go to the PTZ controller here, we can select this input, and we can actually type in the IP address, and I know that this IP address is, do you mind if I hit dot .58 for me? Just 5.8. Oh, we got an extra dot. There we go. So now if we connect to it, we can actually control this camera, which is great. So we've got pan, tilt, zoom, control. You guys have probably seen this before. So we got the IP address in there. And then we also have the ability to take different uh, controls. So we've got the map, the D-pad, and then a little analog controller, which I also like, which kind of lets you do a little joysticking from left to right here. All right, now, um, the fun part about this is that we can set up presets. And I'm just going to stretch this because we're missing just a small part of it. There we go, presets. So I'm going to set a preset number one here. That's kind of like our mixer there. And what I'm going to do... We got him. We got him. Do you want me to put on this audio? Uh... Let me just finish this quick okay. little tutorial, and we'll bring them on. Sure. And maybe, maybe you can set up a virtual, or set up a three-way call. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, so as you can see here, I just created a duplicate of this one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable PTZ calls, and I'm going to have preset one set to this. Now, preset two will have be something else. And you guys probably see where I'm going with this. Why don't we... Oh, that, that looks like a pretty good preset, the too. The picture is huh? fine. Tell me when. All right. I'm going to save it. And now one of the things to note, all right, so that's preset two, is that you probably want to hit that recall and refresh the shot icon so that when you look at it... It's reflective. It'll show what it is. And the other thing, too, Tess, is that we also... I want to highlight I like to, like to do is rename the shot so that the shot itself has a name that reflects it. So maybe you could just type in um, sign or painting. Okay. So you'll see here now it says sign. It looks like a sign. And then when I click our next one, it goes to that preset. And we could actually keep doing that, duplicating shots and moving things around. And then we'd have little pictures of all the different places that our PTZ Optics cameras can go. Um, so you'll see here... We've actually got, and this is actually pretty cool. There's Michael there, our producer who's scrambling to get everything working for you guys. But you got a behind the scenes shot there. Um, here's an NDI camera shot. And um, it's just really nice how all of this works. So there we go. 
And um, the other thing I wanted to show quickly before we bring um, bring in Dan is that I can quickly and easily change our sidebars. So this is how we do our show. You can kind of see it there. Uh, here's the, the video looping there, and I can go that to my output. And just with a click of a button, I can change those inputs, those little pictures. We should side. do our own little, well, I guess you kind of already did a little demo with, like, with the overhead. Yeah, we did, we did the overhead just a little bit because they can't see the, uh, the controller. But let's bring Dan on if we're ready, and let's talk about how cool this is. And if anyone in the chat has any questions for Dan. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Hey, Paul, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And you're not getting yourself back, are you? No. no. Sorry for the rocky oh, start good. there. Good. Hey, hey, you know, live streaming, right? <laughs> it happens. So we started <laughs> off, you know, and we like to start at 2 o'clock, pretend like it's real television, you know, and take it t a little too seriously maybe. <laughs> um, we did, I don't know, we sent you a, a call number that was like, I think, I don't know where it came from, the Cosmos. The but, Cosmos. Uh, <laughs> so Dan's here. Dan, we got to see you at New York, in New York City at the NAB show. And this device yep. here is not new, but I really think it's game changing. I'm going to unplug it since we already kind of did our uh, preview and just show it here. This must save your customers so much time. It's oh yeah, design. you know the the Wirecast users love it. It's just plug and play. They just put it in. He's uh, everywhere. Well, well, you just set it up yourself, right? Yeah. We did actually. We should show in that test set seconds. it up. Do you want to show how you set it up? Because, Dan, there's <laughs> yes. two tricks that you told us. One is obviously how to set it up, but the other was the color yep. coding, which I really like. Yes. Do you want to so talk about can you, that? So uh, can you show your Wirecast interface there? Yeah, let's show the Wirecast interface so we can, can get show that back up. the color coding and then the, um, that setup thing that you were showing Tess as well. Okay. Not so much of a trick as just how to set it up. Which is extremely so here's easy. This, and then, Mike, why don't you show our Wirecast setup? Here we go. So where? So first of all, I love how you can see that these buttons here are like light blue, and I'm colorblind. But why don't you do the colors? light blue, almost a navy, yellow, red, and oh no, the bottom one's navy. Okay, the second blue is like hmm, like a denim blue. Like a denim blue, yeah. <laughs> and then what was the? button that you click to set it up? Uh, it's file preferences. And this is how you configure the Wirecast oh, X keys controller. That. It's just ready to go. your Wirecast gear. You just, yeah, scroll down to controllers and then select from the controllers that you have available. X keys 128 is plugged into the gear so we see it as an option. And that's simply it. There's no programming of the keys themselves. They come pre-programmed to work with Wirecast gear, which is amazing. And uh, the, the little amount of time I've gotten to play with it, I've found it extremely user-friendly. And then was there something else we have to do, Dan, to get the color coordination no. on the inputs? It will automatically color cue. Like it does? It is. It's oh. color cued. That's what, like, they all turned the correct colors as the first time I plugged it? it in. I see. Very nice. Which is crazy. Impressive. That's great. I think Dan is muted. Could, there we go. Oh, let's see. No, you're good. Back? No, you're back. Okay, okay. Yeah, so the earlier versions of Wirecast, you had to actually go in and set that as a preference to turn those those colors on. Really? Uh, but I know talking to, um, talking to the guys at the show, they said they were working on getting that as the default setting to have those color coded. And it's yeah. cool because it really matches the, the controller. So... Uh, the other trick that one of the Wirecast guys showed me at IBC was that if in, when you're working in Wirecast and you want to clear out everything you've done and start a brand new scene, mm -hmm. if you just run your finger down the left side of that controller, it just clears all the layers out so you can I start like over. I like that. Let's show that really quickly, Mike. I thought that was a really overhead. slick <laughs> Because that trick. is, uh, you know, for some people, so you can just go whoop. Yeah, just do that. everything's cleared. Right. And then you got a blank slate. You can start building your scene again. Which is unique uh, for Wirecast. I really like how uh, you can really build a scene in preview before you put it over to live. 
And I really like how they allow you to do that. Me too. It's a very different way of putting together your shot. I mean, it's it's quite different from traditional broadcast, so it took me a little bit to understand it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I didn't even try it until we had that control surface, and I could immediately see what you were saying, Paul, that having that surface just with the GUIs right in front of you, and it makes so much sense. You just hit those inputs, they light up, you move them around, put them where you want them, and then go live. So it is kind of a, a neat interface. So Absolutely. this is part of our giveaway for churches. So if you saw the beginning of our show, we have... Oh, Christopher Spato loves the PTZ integration with Wirecast. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, it, it really is quite nice, and we did a quick tutorial on it. I am going to be publishing a more in-depth video, which is some of the – I showed you guys some of the shortcuts about refreshing the shot and everything. But uh, if you are a church, you're a member of a church, if you know someone in church, uh, we are going to be giving away a Wirecast gear with two cameras and this awesome control surface um, at the WFX show, which is coming up in just two weeks. That's the world's largest church house of worship facilities expo i don't know if you guys want to cover any questions at this time so alex i I do have something else i want to show you at some point absolutely well why don't we do why don't we let dan show his thing and then we'll do the q a maybe after sure works for me what do you got for us dan you got something cool cool can you bring me full screen mike thank you oh you got the ultimate so here's that that controller right uh, yeah, this is our, our T-bar that I'm, I'm using to run this thing right now. But but this Wirecast controller, and we make a set of legs for this thing. It's a, like a steel box mm. that you can mount a nook into mm-hmm. or like an Android computer or anything like that right in the back of it. And it holds the controller up at a 45-degree angle. And this is what I've been using to demo Wirecast at our shows because it puts it right there. And it's it's kind of a neat little option. I really like it. So let me think about this for a second. You're now you're going to want one, aren't you, Paul? There? Well, yes, of course. Um, so now you're putting an Intel Nook inside of there. And as we all know, the Intel Nooks uh, are just super fast little miniature computers, which we actually sell here in PTZ Optics in our producer kits. So I'm just thinking it's going to take Great. me a while to figure this out, but you could put the Nook in there. You could have your HDMI monitors right next to it, and it would be a nice little control surface. Wow. Yeah, there is even a, a, a bracket we make on the back of this thing so you could mount a small monitor right on top of it. Wow. Oh, that's oh, very versatile. Slot tucks in here, and you could have a little monitor right up on top of it. So, you still so need it's, a keyboard uh, and mouse. Uh, we're working on it. And, yeah, you, uh, you still need a keyboard and mouse, but you know, somebody says, well, you're, you're kind of reinventing the laptop. But <laughs> with a nook and a monitor, keyboard and mouse. Yeah, some people love those keys, though. But it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Christopher Keywell is mentioning that the physical uh, interface matches the graphical interface, which is huge. And that's something that's been done, actually, for a long time uh, with New Tech, mm-hmm. right? New Tech has almost always sold their, their products with a graph, a, a uh, interface that matches the software and it's great that wirecast is doing that because wirecast really is for like the streamer Mm -hmm. you know the mac user the pc user there's a question for you dan does this work with macs yeah it absolutely does wow because i know that you know when it comes to a mac user there's not as many options as windows and uh wirecast becomes a really good option there right i wonder if you could mount a mac mini in this base i haven't really Try that. That's something we could experiment with. They're a little bigger than the Nooks, but there's a couple new ones out there, too. There's some newer Mac Minis that are even, like, taller but thinner. Or taller but smaller footprint. Well, that's cool. It's it, worth an experiment, right? So let's, Certainly let's is. Take a couple, we got a couple of questions for you, and then maybe, Dan, you could join us for our podcast as well. Sure. That'd be fun. Yay. Do the lights on the controller match the green and red preview live within Wirecast? Uh, Almost, because our LEDs are blue and red. So they've configured them to, you know, use blue and red instead of green and red. But, yeah, they do light up and indicate which which keys are live. 
Um, if you're oh. streaming and you're recording and those options are live, those keys light up. There's a nice mm -hmm. little indicator. That's wonderful. Another All question right. for you gentlemen here. Typically, where do presets get stored on Wirecast and vMix? Are they in the software or programmed back to the camera, which is then responsible for the movement? So yeah, that's a question you know, for you, Paul. Um, in general, um, I remember having this conversation with Wirecast, and I'm probably going to get it wrong, but I, I believe it is stored Not as wrong. a camera. So uh wirecast is you know saving preset one two three four it just tells the camera hey go to preset one the camera already has that the coordinates for that saved um so i believe that is the way it's visca over ip so it's a very fast and reliable protocol this might be another one for you paul and i don't know if dan has any input Ooh. on this one how smooth is the wirecast compared to the gen 3 joystick for tracking a presenter um, well, we looked at this. If you want to look at the software one more time, um, one of the things we can look at here, let's clear some layers. There we go. Um, when you go to the PTZ controller, which is what you have access to, you have three options. So you've got a map. That's good for just going to a random place. Uh, but it's not... Oh, okay, I have to go to this camera, which is 58. Is the analog pad the one that's like the joystick almost um yes that one's probably i guess what would be the smoothest because i believe you can pan this one. and tilt at the same time with that feature there we go all right sorry and so yeah we have this d map you can just kind of click it anywhere and then you have the d analog which is your standard traditional arrow D8. system there's 60 and 66. Hmm. I can't remember which one's which anymore. But uh, there's the D-pad and then there's the analog pad. So the analog pad gives you the most amount. Is that the table cam? Because I think we have it written down. Yeah, that's the table cam. PTZ yeah. West. But the IP anyway, address. Anyway, for this... For this yeah. yeah, it's all right. So, but uh, yeah, probably the IP joystick would probably do a better job um the new one is presenter. definitely i would say one for dan are you going to do that for the adx key as well i don't know if he's referring to the lights or the wire cast well as far as wire cast is concerned yeah as far as wire cast is concerned uh this was their design and they chose the 128 uh and it, it actually the this 128 is a better fit for their gui than the 80. Um, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> you, this is another experiment we could run, but <laughs> if you plugged our 80 into Wirecast, it might support the first 10 columns of this interface. Interesting, that's because a little the, trick. Because the, yeah, the data report that we send uh, is identical. It's just a matter of whether or not they're uh, looking for our specific unit Mm -hmm. ID. Um, <laughs> more experiments, Paul. <laughs> yep. And we're, yep. We like we're to experiment to over here. But that, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'd recommend that because it would not have the go live key on it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Since I that's mean, on the right side. You guys have, you guys have uncovered so many nested oh, options. Oh, he might be talking about the mount, too. To potentially. Oh, yeah, good point. Do you have oh, for the, the mount? mount? Let's answer that, too, just in case, because I'm sure people are curious. Yeah. Uh, the the steel box I showed you is designed specifically for the 128 and Got our it. 124 T-bar. Um, we are working on There's something we call flippy feet that will be mm -hmm. an addition you could add on to our 80 or 24 that would make a little stand for it to prop it up. That sounds similar cute. to what this does. Yeah. Cute little flippy, flippy feet. feet. Yeah. <laughs> Going to presets has traditionally been so fast that you don't want viewers seeing uh, the cam move to the preset. Do we have any way to set a camera pan speed? Yes, and th one of the great things about that is that it's now built into the camera all the way. So you can change it right at the OSD menu level. 
let's see if I can show this really quickly because I know this is a question that we get quite a lot. It's it can be sh all right. Great, here we go. So if you see here under PTZ, we now have preset speed. So the only my only uh, recommendation is that it comes at like a high speed, which I think it should come at more of a medium to low speed because it's kind of jarring when it goes psh, 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 real fast. But you can go all the way from one to I think thirty now, and so you can have the presets uh, go really slowly and uh, have a lot more fine control. So one to twenty four there, and uh, so that is a master set for the camera on the PTZ speeds. Some love from Gary saying X keys are great. I use the four key, eight key, and the controller that has the shuttle wheel. Wow. All the better to give different responsibilities to different operators at stations. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank Everyone's you, Gary. A big fan. Um, it, uh, I don't know if you guys have prowled around on our Facebook page or in our user group, but um, TJ Thompson, who was with us at NAB last year, did a really cool series of tutorials on how he uses our jog and shuttle for instant replay and he's like a one-man band and he's doing just this phenomenal replay stuff with it uh it's worth checking out uh, if you want to come into our user group for sure i'm a member yeah i'd really like to take a look at that. you are speaking of which this is a great opportunity to plug your user group is it facebook.com slash groups slash x keys or is it pi engineering or i should know that uh, I'm assuming it's don't. slash XP's. I know <laughs> that you have somebody in the chat, so they can just chat it. Um, I, yeah, I think we um, we couldn't get X keys on Facebook because Cross Keys in the UK had it locked up before we did. Ah. Uh, so we're like X keys underscore PI or something. Right. Odd like that, but um, if you search for X keys on Facebook, you will find us. Especially if you if you put the dash in X dash keys. So. Cool. Well, we do have a giveaway um, to, to do, but we usually we do that in the post show. So if you're cool with sticking around, Dan, can we pull you into the uh, podcast uh, later this af after the show? I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you guys in the post show podcast in just a moment. Thank you for tuning in. That was X Keys and Wirecast uh, coming together to create a great video production solution for volunteers and professional broadcasters alike. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. So, Dan, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Ah, yes, I can hear you.